Uh, 211, here's a three three series of 211 when all, wow, went down to 199. Again, that, that's the greatest thing about trading pivots and trading technical analysis. Nobody needs to hold your hand. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trading.com nightly wrap-up show. So it was all about the Fed. We started seeing uh, contracting channels yesterday, right? We saw volume uh, getting slowly kind of moving away. Uh, no big bets, as you guys remember, just going back 24 hours uh, in the options market one way or another. And it was all about uh, the Fed. It was what the plans for the Fed was going to do. Now, before uh, you know, before the headlines came out, we knew a couple of things. Number one, we were in a pandemic, right? We were absolutely in a global pandemic. How many, how many people thought uh, you were going to ever go through a pandemic? Okay, so the, the global economy, not just by uh, our standards, but the global economy was literally put uh, to a standstill for a very, very long time. So the idea that anybody thought logically that they were going to increase rates in this meeting was was just that didn't make sense, right? We were literally in the first inning of recovery. It's going to take a couple of years. Some businesses will never recover. Unfortunately, some people uh, will never recover. So there really wasn't uh, anything that came out of the headlines, at least in the beginning, that spoke to us and say, well, this is what's going to happen imminent. Hold on to your wallets. Hold on to everything. This is what's going to happen. And, you know, the, the longer they kept on talking and talking and talking, everything was kind of uh, you know, kind of a standstill, uh, no immediate rates. Uh, the one kind of a shaking effect came with a potential of a hike in 2022 and two potential hikes uh, in 2023. That's two years from now, right? Uh, anything could happen from now to, uh, you know, till now, till next week, let alone two years. So the idea that something is on the table, eventually, yes, look, a, a global economy, when it gets better, eventually rates will rise. That's a sign of a global economy. We're nowhere near that, right? So the idea that the market, and you know, the, the headlines read tonight, markets were jittery because the Fed's going to raise rates two years from now. You know, let's, let's, let's make it to two years, right? Let's, you know, you, life is not guaranteed uh, 30 seconds from now, let alone two years. So the idea that uh, the market, quote unquote, went down because of the Fed uh, making statements of a possible a couple of rate, rate hikes two years from now is kind of insane. The market doesn't need a, a reason, right? It really doesn't need a reason, especially after a really, really big move in the last couple of weeks uh, in the queues. Uh, if you look at the diamonds, right, you know, market has been going down sideways, came in a little bit, held this macro rising support, not really a big deal, down a couple of hundred points. Uh, you look at the SPY, kind of did exactly the same thing. What was the last time you saw the such a tight range in the spies in the S&P for three, four weeks? I mean, look how tight this range is. So you know, headlines sell uh, clicks, point clicks, all that clickbait, all that stuff, uh, advertises states. But the reality is this. We are in the first inning, again, of a recovery. It's going to take us a long, long time. The government understands that they're trying to do their best legally, morally, whatever the case may be, either buy, you know, backing, printing more money, uh, buying more treasuries, supplying a Band-Aid that we can start recovering day by day. So I think on the surface, the headline is blah, 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 rate hike two years from now. The reality is everything is copacetic. Technicals are still there. They're being observed. The bull market is still very, very strong. You could, you could clearly tell even when the chairman started speaking. They sold off the market right away. And if you look at the bounce, uh, if you look at that first immediate bounce, it was very, very aggressive. There's buyers. There's, there's program buyers. There's natural buyers coming in, especially in the NASDAQ 100. If you look at the NASDAQ 100, until we get into that sell bias stage again, we would have to lose this whole range here. So the idea that the market sold off today because of fears is, is irrelevant, right? The market sold off because there's gravity, right? The market doesn't need reasons to sell off. It's just a headline that kind of painted a picture. We got down to the 10-day moving average, lost the five very, very quickly on the news, uh, came into the 10-day moving average, and just like in true bull market nature, uh, quote-unquote buying the dip, we held levels, right? We don't just uh, hold 
random places where stocks bounce, we hold levels. And you can see here how the Qs held the 10-day moving average. A lot of names that were strong, continue to be strong. Uh, Amazon has been in just an absolute monster, right? Just an absolute monster uh, ever since it broke out four days ago from that 3,300 level, uh, went all the way to the 3,430. We talked about that uh, on last night's video, two nights ago's video. We talked about it this morning and hit the perfect linear regression line uh, around this 3430 level. Uh, Apple continues to be really, really strong. Again, it, these are the stocks that once they reclaim levels, they're going to stay above those levels. They're going to build until internals tell us, well, there's no reason for sellers uh, to be comfortable. Let the sellers take over. That's not the case right now. Until we start breaking down macro levels of fall below demand again, especially in the NASDAQ 100, you're going to get a well-deserved rest. And you, you're seeing this well-deserved rest in a lot of names. Although Facebook today had a really ugly reversal. Look at look how good the Facebook chart looks, right? Just take a step back and say, look, look how beautiful this chart is. Just because it was weak today doesn't mean the top is in. It just means it's getting a very well-deserved rest. Uh, look at Zoom, right? Zoom had a monster, monster run out of this range here, right? Monster run. They couldn't even crack this thing below the five-day moving average, and it recovered right away, reclaimed the five-day, and now it's a stone throws away of confirming uh, the previous uh, couple of days high. So the market is very, very strong. The most important part is lack of materialistic news, right? If some sort of crazy strain comes and there's no, you know, there's no medical way to cure it. There's no vaccine that's going to cure it. That's going to be a material reason to kind of start selling off equities. Technically, until they start breaking down, we can't have the conversation, the market's going down. No, stocks might be going down. Some stocks could be broken. Again, there's a lot of broken looking charts. If you look at Baidu, you know, it's ugly, right? It's terrible. If you look at a stock like AI, we talked about this again, they just can't crack this damn thing, but it doesn't look good, right? If you look at a stock like uh, Alibaba, right? Alibaba doesn't look great as well. Tesla today almost fell off a cliff, right? We caught a little cash flow in Tesla. It survived the bottom of the channel. We kind of knew the levels. We talked about the levels, so it wasn't really a shock uh, that it, it held because, again, we talked about this level. We'll talk about the pivots uh, in a second, but the most important part is we got through the Fed day. That was the, that was the two-day window that the market was kind of sitting there watching everything, didn't want to make any bets. Uh, the market right now, like I said a couple of minutes ago, is getting an incredibly well-deserved rest. Are there five-star setups for tomorrow? No, absolutely not. There's some good setups, right? There's some names uh, that look pretty good, but if we do get more of a back test, and this is not just a one-day thing, and the queues start losing at least a 10-day moving average, at, at least at that point, we could start entertaining the idea of, well, maybe start looking at both sides of the market instead of just continuing to buy dips on strong names into rising support. Because if you look at all names today, they were strong yesterday, they were strong today, uh, strong the day before, they were strong today, right? Amazon, uh, Apple, uh, very, very good names. The key right now is how long are the bulls going to go sideways, right? That's that's the old, old, ultimate question. And the one thing that the market doesn't need to give us, right? The market really doesn't need to give us value. The old thing, uh, what the market wants to do and, and has been doing is giving structure, right? Bulls, bears, uh, traders, uh, index funds, whatever the case may be. So the idea that the market needs to give us something tomorrow is, is ludicrous. It doesn't make sense. So the only question going into tomorrow's session is how much value are we going to get? Are we going to get another kind of a flat to down to drifting session in the indexes? And how many names are finally going to come out of channels? Uh, and if you look at some names for tomorrow, you know, there, there is a two-way trade in Tesla, right? Today, it, 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 the only thing that saved it today, right? We talked about it last night in the video. The only thing that saved it today was this linear regression line at, at, at 593, which we talked about, uh, which we talked about pre-market. Uh, pre-market, there was no, uh, it didn't just stop randomly. Uh, but again, if you look at the 60-minute view, right, and this is a bad tick here, but if you look at the 60-minute view, there might be a trade back to the upside. But if this band gets confirmed, um, if today's band, <coughs> excuse me, if this band gets confirmed tomorrow, then again, we could get an angry pull in Tesla. But look at a name like Rambus. And Rambus um, has a very special place in, in, in my trading career. This was literally the first trade I put on uh, during the internet craze, even though this was an internet stock, but this was literally the first trade I put on during the internet craze. 
and this stock will always have a special place in my heart. A monster, monster move today. Huge expansion volume. This thing is very, very close uh, to taking out the top of this channel. And if it does, it could go really, really strong. So keep an eye on Rambus again uh, in the chip space. Uh, look at a name like Ice, right? Look at a name like Ice. Uh, again, it's sitting there right below the 50-day moving average. If you look at Apple's chart, remember the Apple chart a couple of days ago, right? It was sitting underneath the 50-day moving average. So look what happened to Apple once it reclaimed the 50, right? Started moving up here. Look at ICE as well, right? Not really a name that I that I look at or trade, but again, any time a stock keeps on hitting the 50-day moving average, and eventually if this thing starts reclaiming, you could get a bigger move. So keep an eye on ICE for tomorrow. Good, good, solid consolidation. Uh, now all it needs to do is reclaim uh, the 50-day moving average. Uh, Zoom, I still like. I, you know, it's a nice res day. Uh, it, I love the way it's holding the 50-day moving average. I love the way the fact uh, that it couldn't crack uh, the five-day when the market got pulled. And all it needs to do is just take out the top of this channel here, right? Literally the top of this channel here and confirm the daily and you could get a bigger move. And again, this is going to be contingent based upon how good and how strong the market is. But again, at least the setups are there. So we're kind of set up here. You don't want to go gangbusters into tomorrow's session just because, again, we're not getting that premium, premium session. You're not going to run out buying Amazon after a 130-point move in four days, right? You're not going to you know, run out and buy in, in NVIDIA after a 150-point move as it's starting to move a little bit lower. But there are names that we still like. I, I definitely like Apple. I think Apple is, is very, very strong. Uh, today we saw uh, weekly 133 calls. And again, if the market is strong for tomorrow, you know, Apple is just putting in a nice little flag and held the five day uh, perfectly. I know some of you guys in the webinar uh, caught that five day bounce perfectly. Uh, looking good, right? Absolutely looking good. It broke out above this uh, 28 and a half level, uh, the macro pivot we put in a couple of days ago. And now it's just kind of relaxing around that 130, 131 area. And if it starts confirming this channel, you should get its next leg up. So uh, today played out pretty much like we talked about. Uh, yesterday, I didn't really love anything. I watched, I traded some Tesla, got some cash flow. It traded exactly to the bottom of the channel where we thought. It just didn't get that second confirmation below 593. So that is the area that we want to watch. So uh, 595 held uh, four times. Uh, that's also the pre-market low. Uh, the bottom of the channel is the 593 level. And it cracked that and it stopped perfectly there. It took a little bit of cash flow on it. Nothing big. But again, we want to watch that area. Uh, you know, Musk tweeted out something about supercharges, blah, blah, blah. You could read it on his timeline. It made the stock surge. So there's always a possibility of a two-sided uh, trade in uh, Tesla. But the most important part is, again, be conscious of the level. So here's kind of what, I, what we talked about last night in the video. We reiterated the point today, and I said, I'm expecting a low value day, right? A low value day ahead of the Fed with tight channels, tear down your activity level, understanding what you're up against before the day starts is, is crucial to your career. Again, you can't drive 100 miles an hour in midtown Manhattan rush hour traffic. It doesn't work that way. So it was very, very important. So Amazon uh, continued the move. Congratulations for all you guys who not only still kept the runner from the 3,300 level, but traded it today. Uh, fantastic move from the macro breakout. 3,400 needs to build to get to a new base of 3,430, 3,450. Uh, here was Amazon. Really nice move on Amazon. Traded right to uh, 3,430. See that, guys? This is where I got the 3,430, and this is where I got the 3,450s. So traded right to the 3,430s level. Beautiful move on Amazon. Uh, just fantastic, fantastic stock. Uh, AI just cannot crack that 57 level. It's been kind of sitting there now like four or five times, nothing there. Airbnb never got to 54. Uh, Apple, again, continues uh, to its digestion. Again, it traded right in between these two levels. Once it starts building over 31, and you can see the original pivot here, but once it starts building above that 31, uh, can really get going. ENTX uh, got upgraded today, traded to 425, never got to 430. Uh, BNTX. I didn't watch BNTX today. If you guys did, I apologize. I wasn't even watching it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, damn. Damn. I missed a good one. I missed the sucker. I missed a good one. Whoever called this thing out on the webinar off the 211 break, congratulations. Great job. I did not. I, I totally forgot about this thing. Yeah. 211 held three times. So if builds below, can get hit. Wow. If you guys caught this thing, congratulations. I did not. Uh, 211. Here's a three three series of 211. When oh, wow, went down to 199. Again, that, that's the greatest thing about trading pivots and trading technical analysis. Nobody needs to hold your hand. You know, technical analysis says it's either going to go or it's not going to go. This is a perfect example of it. But if you did catch it, uh, congratulations! I wasn't even watching this thing. Uh, ZM 
Uh, we're still watching, did not confirm. Uh, Boeing 244 held three times if it builds below, can flush. Boeing closed pretty much at the lows. Uh, nice call. I think it was uh, Cheyenne who called it out. Nice call there. It held the 244 several times, traded all the way down to 241. Uh, it looks like it, it could get the 240 tomorrow if you still uh, have a position in this thing. Uh, Roku got destroyed. Congratulations, all you guys who caught Roku. Uh, yesterday, the stock got murdered, and today was part two, uh, 338, 337. If it builds below, it can flush more. They they wrecked uh, they wrecked Roku, uh, really wrecked it. So uh, it took out it took out this 338, 337 level. Look at this candle here, right? This is a monster, monster candle, right? This was yesterday. It started stopped at the channel here, this 338, 337 level, and just got absolutely destroyed, went all the way down uh, to 327. Great move, great, great move on Roku for all you guys who caught that. Uh, new highs coming in on Amazon. Um, yeah, Geo. Uh, yeah, here's a perfect little example of a bounce, right? Um, you know, call buyers are coming in for the 8, 10, 12s. Uh, it's coming into the rising support, 720. It literally stopped at 720, uh, closed at 730. Again, it's not that it's a big move. That's not the point. But the point is you could still buy strong stocks, whatever anybody else the retail is trading, but you can buy them literally into rising support. It'll give you a much better uh, value, especially with uh, especially with um, uh, call buying. Yeah, and this, here's the point. Uh, t Tesla, second entry, 493 is still the key here. Uh, and that's it, right? And that's it. So we got the Fed out of the way. Uh, we got some, at least some sort of news that we could at least focus on uh, back to technicals, uh, back to uh, individual stocks, individual scenarios. And the most important part is have an open mind every day, have no expectations. Expectations means no disappointment, means no emotions. Guys, have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow.